and today as you can see I've got lots of paints lined up and I've got two canvases because I'm going to set myself a challenge today to create matching paintings. Now, I've been thinking about it for a while because I see some beautiful kind of matching paintings and, and uh, three part paintings and things in the Facebook group and I'm thinking I just don't feel confident in creating a series of canvases that kind of lead on from one another but what if I could make a photocopy of a picture what if I could make one picture and then make another picture exactly the same but a mirror image and that is what I'm going to try to do today because I'm going to make a picture on here and then I'm going to put another canvas on the top not like that like that <laughs> like that um, and see if I can make a mirror image on the second canvas. I've not tried it. I thought I might as well do it on camera and we will see what happens. Because hell, what's the worst that can happen? It can just go horribly wrong and we could all have a big laugh and uh, learn that we should never try that again. So I'm not gonna do any specific design because I don't want to over complicate anything. So what I'm gonna do is just lay a bunch of colors on here um, put the other one on top, press it down, and basically take a print from my painting. And we will see what happens. So, nothing fancy. I'm just going to start off with some black up at the top. I don't even think probably that I need to fill the whole canvas because, of course, what I'm going to do is press down on it. And I think as I press down, it's going to automatically um, flatten the paints out, move them about, make them go further and maybe make them kind of go over the side of the canvas. But I don't know, we will see. Um, so I'm gonna start with some black at the top. I should probably get those out of the way. And then I'm just gonna add patches of color. Um, and we'll allow them to kind of like just spread out a little bit and see what happens. So I'm thinking that I probably want darker up at the top and then I'm gonna try go a bit lighter at the bottom. Um, but, oh, I've got a bit of a clogged nozzle there. It'll still work out. Oh, have I got a lump? No, it's just a bubble. It's fine. Anyway, so nothing exciting going on. I'm not going to try and do anything kind of super fancy apart from lay a few colours down. I might as well let them go, I think, over the edge a little bit. We'll see what happens. Um, and then I'll try and print, if you see what I mean. And I'll try and print from one to the other. So, see what happens. I'm not really going to think too much about the colours because it's just an experiment at this stage to see what's going to happen. So I'll just lay them kind of down in a bit of a, a random thing. And I'm going to do larger patches rather than smaller ones because um, I'm thinking it's going to kind of squidge, squidge down. And I want to make sure I've got plenty of paint to... Um, Oh, probably the orange and the magenta and the red next to each other weren't a good, weren't a good pick. Anyway, we'll go with it. Seeing it's down there, um, and then they'll spread out and it'll all be good, right? It's all going to look fabulous in the end. So I want plenty of paint because I know it's going to spread, um, but if I don't have enough, then my other canvas will end up kind of bare. I don't want that to happen. So a few of these colours down, not in any particular random order. What have I used? What have I not used? Uh, oh, I haven't got any white. Maybe I should use some white in a minute. What have I got? Have I used some of that light red? More of the red. Um, and then maybe let's bring some more blues down here now because I've got this kind of turquoisey blue that I like. So let's put that down there. A bit more in this corner. Cover those corners up. And then maybe start to layer darker colours again, like I did at the top, just a little bit. So that it kind of balances it out. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, those two are bleeding into each other a little bit. I didn't want that to happen. But anyway, it has. So we'll go with it. A bit more orange. What am I missing down at the bottom there? Oh, a finger. No, I was not missing a finger. I didn't really intend to do that. Let's go with this darker red. And now I'm just going to fill in a little bit with some black at the bottom to balance off. I'm thinking that's just all going to dribble off down the side anyway. And now, what about some white highlights in this? Should I just put white 
patches because these are going to bleed I'm sure put some some white on the top and we'll see what happens with that okay this is a lot of paint I can see it kind of spreading out so I think I've got plenty of paint spread everything off to one side and let's now try and take a photocopy of this painting and see what happens. I'm zoom in. Oh, oy, not that much. Oh, I've got paint off the buttons of my camera and uh, it doesn't respond very well. Oh, now it's going all the way out. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just go with that then, shall we? Seeing that's what the camera wants. Okay, so let's now put this one down on the top and I'm going to let it kind of float there a minute. There's a lot of paint, so as I squish, it's going over the sides and covering the sides of the canvas that I've got on the bottom. And that is a good idea because I'm going to flip this up in a minute so that this top canvas becomes the bottom. I'm going to squidge on that side too. So let's see if I can do that without making too much mess. Okay, that's good. So now my bottom canvas that has all the paint on it is now the top and I'm hoping that the excess paint is now going to drip down onto the other one if I've got any areas of the canvas that I haven't touched and while I'm kind of squidging it a little bit more and now covering the sides on this bottom canvas which is good and I'm also going to gently rub now in the centre because the, um, the sides are obviously wooden and firm and as I'm pressing the two sides together, top and bottom here, they're touching. But I want to make sure that the canvas does too. I don't know whether I should really kind of rub it and smooth the paint, so whether just tapping is good enough, but we will see. It could turn into one holy mess when I pick this up and instead of having copies I'll end up with two kind of just brown messy paintings but let's see okay so now I think while I've got them like this I'm going to use my paintbrush there's my brush there it is because I've got matching paint that's dribbled off down here so where I've got blue I've got blue where I've got red I've got red and so on and so I'm just going to pick up those spills and paint in the sides of the canvas you don't need to watch and wait me do that so I'll turn off while I just paint the sides and then we'll come back and we'll lift up our photocopy and see what we've got okay so I've touched up all of my sides they're all looking good and matching and I'm just going to nudge this over to one side so that I can take the other one off over here and we can take a look at them side by side and see what we get. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, it's a lot of paint to waste and two canvases have met if I've made a big mess. But let's see what happens. Should I just lift it up or should I try and lift it sideways? Let's go sideways. Whoop. Oh no! Oh. Nearly a disaster. <laughs> they were stuck together. I should have thought of that. I should have held one down as I lifted the other up. Okay, so let's see. What have we got? Do we have a matching pair of paintings? You know, I think we do. <laughs> I think it's turned out pretty uh, good, actually. I can see there's still a lot of paint on there. I probably added far too much. I was trying to be obviously um, cautious to make sure that I had enough paint to cover two full canvases. And I've probably done a little bit too much. I can see where the, the edges of the canvas were touching, just on this one, just here. I've got a couple of little areas where the paint's a bit thin so I'm just going to hop around this other side and I've got plenty of runoff of the right colour so I can just dip in a little bit here and fill these bits in okay looking good mostly it's just the stuff right on the edge here where the the wooden kind of part of the canvas was touching I've got a little bit of black and blue just to fill in there see this looks about right let's go with this I think it will be fine yeah it was just where the canvases were touching I've made the paint a little bit thin in those spots but that fills in nicely with a brush got a bit of black to do there there's all my black spills for this side mostly 
it's pretty easy to fill these in really when it's wet it will kind of matches in nicely so I don't think I need to worry a bit black there and it's going to be fine so let's see what else have we got everything else looks pretty good a little bit of black there I think the black is a bit more obvious because obviously it's got the white canvas underneath and just a little bit there otherwise we are good we are very good um, so let's see are they kind of matching this one has more pink I think because cells have come through on this one uh, this one has got kind of a yellow patch here the yellows are slightly bit different but we've got yellow and pink just here blue dark blue red and black the orange the red orange red blue yellow yeah I think they are a pretty good match obviously they are um, a mirror image of each other rather than two which are kind of identical but I think that's still not a problem I'm just going to run my torch over and pick up any little bubbles that are in there oh I need some gas probably yeah I might have gas I'll go and get some gas okay give it a little torch over I'm not trying to bring up any cells, I really just want to um, uh, pop any air bubbles that we've got here, so I'm going to try and do it very lightly. Okay, I think that's good. Got a little bit more black there, so I think as it dries I'll need to just keep an eye on it because it is black on um, a white canvas and just make sure that I pick up any little bits of spills and fill in the black around these edges but otherwise I think this has been pretty damn successful so I do enjoy um, dipping as a, a process you don't often see me do it because in, I'm normally doing it off the camera when I've finished a, a project and I've got you know paint all over the work surface I'll often take little mini canvases or I'll take small tiles and things and dip because I really like the effect that it gives. So you might, may even see more dipping from me in the future. Maybe I'll dip some canvases and we'll do it actually as part of, um, part of a video rather than just what I do with the waste paints when they are left over. So let me bring you down and we'll have a look at some of the details on these. So here are the two side by side. I think um, in terms of display, I probably wouldn't put them like this. I would probably put them upright, I don't know. I'll have to have to decide later on once they dry because of course it might dry completely different as well so if you look at some of the details it looks very nice we do have some cells turning up in various different places but really it was the the whole riot of color that I was looking for today some nice areas there that um, turquoise and orange looks good together and uh, yeah so it's really just the whole riot of colors and really a challenge to see if I could dip one painting on top of another basically and get really what is basically um, a photocopy of the original painting and in so doing I think um, it actually created two beautiful ones so I'm really happy really really happy with these yeah lovely delighted so I might go on and do a little bit more of this now I like where we get this kind of this effect where one color bleeds a little bit into another always happy to see that yellow and pink there together yeah lots of really nice really nice effects oh and this bit's nice I like the red and the orange together there against the blue ah I just like it all I'm very very happy with it so I'm at least uh, glad that it wasn't a total bust um, I'm happy with the results and I think I'd have managed to complete my own challenge of getting basically a photocopy or, or a copy of my original painting and make it an exact copy for a second one. So hang around if you like and I'm going to dry these off and I'll show you what they all look like when they're finished, dried and varnished. So here's both paintings now dry and finished with their varnish coating and although they don't look identical I think they make a very good pair. As you can see there were some differences during the drying process, some colours came more through more than others, this, um, this area has a lot more cells, this one has a lot more white for example but I think whichever way you use them they make a very good set and the good thing is because they are mirror images they were created this way then they create you know a, a balanced set that way if you turn them 
90 degrees, they make a balanced set in that direction. Whoops. Turn them 90 degrees, they make another balanced set in that direction. Turn them again, and they're balanced in that direction too. So whichever way you turn the paintings, you can always get um, a kind of symmetry and balance to them, if that's what you're looking for. Or of course you can, you know, set one at 90 degrees to the other if you want to create something that looks a little bit more funky. For me, I like it when they are kind of a bit more balanced and the two of them match. So I think it's been um, a, a interesting and successful idea to take two paintings and basically take a copy of each and create a, a mirror image. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Follow along and don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see some more. See you again soon.